Hey everyone, welcome back to Signal Processing with Paul. In this video, what I wanna do is give you an illustration of how complex numbers work as a function of time. So what I've done here is I've defined this purple circle to basically be Euler's expression. This is a complex number where we have the Cartesian coordinates r cosine of w times t, where w is going to be our sort of angular frequency, and then r times sine of wt, this is going to be our y value. And what I've done here is I've set this up so I can animate t naught, which is this point, as we go from zero to two pi. So the first thing to notice is when I play this, this position t naught, as I vary t naught from zero to two pi, what it's gonna do is rotate around the unit circle. So I'm gonna just go ahead and play this right now. And as you can see, as we go from zero to two pi, we're basically doing a full rotation. Remember, w in this case is one, so it's just basically cosine of of t naught, and this is what we see. Now, to illustrate this point, the y coordinate of this is just doing the sine of w times t. So in this case, when I run this forward, notice how these things, the y coordinate is always gonna match up. And as I continue going, it is just doing a sine wave because I'm looking at the projection of this point onto the imaginary axis. So this is what this looks like back and forth. And similarly, the X coordinate is forming a cosine term. So this blue line is showing what the X coordinate is looking like. So as we continue going forward, it will always follow the X coordinate of this other cosine term. And as I continue increasing it, it's going to go up as it traces around the circle. So this is the illustration of what's going on as we're viewing the projection of this point onto the y-axis, or sorry, onto the x-axis. So I could have just as easily basically said, um, let's set this point y value to zero. And if we show this curve, let's set this point's x value to zero. So, what instead you're gonna see now is basically I am, as I'm moving this, I'm gonna grab the X coordinate from this point, which is following this curve, and the Y coordinate from this sine curve. Pretty straightforward. Now, to make things a little bit more simple, I'm gonna turn these, these points off and what I wanna do is show what happens when I increase the angular frequency. So right now, we go from zero to two pi, and these things just bounce around like this. But what I can do here is increase my angular frequency. So I increase this to two. What this is going to mean now is we're multiplying our t naught, our time index, by a factor of two. So think about what you're expecting this is gonna happen. Well, for any value I had previously, I'm going to be doing twice that value, which means in the same time interval from zero to two pi, I'm actually going to do two rotations around the unit circle. So here we go, there's one going to pi, and then there is another one. And similarly, if I was going to decrease this to 0 0.5, doing this will only make it halfway around the circle from zero to two pi. And of course, we can basically have some fun with this. For instance, we can make this you know, 1.333 or something like this. And as we go from zero to two pi, we make it around the circle once and then basically a third of the way around. So this W, it's, we can think of this as angular frequency, but it really is controlling the rate at which we're rotating around. So hopefully this illustration is a little bit helpful for understanding how sine, cosine, and time interact. And thanks for watching.